Welcome to ECE 341 Random Processes. This is the syllabus and introduction for the class. Now a little bit of background. I'm the instructor Jake Lauer. My office doesn't really matter since this summer all classes are being taught remotely. The lectures are all posted on YouTube. If you go to Bison Academy, all the lectures will be there along with the curriculum that we'll be covering. I'll have classes from 9 to 10 in the morning as well as 6 to 7 p.m. in the evenings. The Zoom meetings are really more uh, of a office hours. If you have questions on the homework, if you need some clarification, that's what the Zoom meetings are for. All the lectures should be there on YouTube along with the lecture notes, um, along with other references that let you do the homework. There's some other references. If you want a textbook, uh, Probability and Statistics by DeGroote is a very good textbook. Only costs $6 if you get a used edition on Amazon. Principles of Statistics is highly rated. That's $6 as well. There's also free sites online. The grade in the class, there will be three midterms. Each is worth one, one unit. Homework's worth unit, and the total grade is the average of those. And straight scale, meaning 90% you got a guaranteed A, 80% guaranteed B. I might curve down, saying my tests are a little bit too aggressive. 89 might be an A, but if you have a 90%, you don't have to worry about the curve. Guaranteed you got an A. The homework is due on a daily basis. Solutions will be posted the following day, and we'll go over the homework the following day. Testing will be take home, of course. Uh, they'll be posted at 8 a.m., and they'll be due at midnight that day. All tests are open book, open notes, calculators, internet, MATLAB all permitted, just not other people. And as I mentioned, the lecture notes are all posted in Bison Academy. If you go to Bison Academy under Random Processes, you'll have all the lectures and PDF files. The videos will be posted shortly. I haven't completed those yet. Some other references. StatTrack has got good lecture notes on statistics. British Columbia campus also has good lecture notes. And the homeworks. Here's where the homeworks are posted and the solutions will be posted after they're due. Now starting out, what is a random process? A random process is a process whose outcome is not completely repeatable. For example, the rand function in MATLAB gives you a different answer every time you type it. Another example, more related to electrical engineering, if you go out and grab a resistor out of a bin, the resistance value will change for each resistor that you measure. If I grab a transistor out of a bin, the gain beta depends upon which one you pull out. Each transistor will have a slightly different gain. So likewise, everything you see in electrical engineering is slightly different. If you take a measurement, I can measure how high I can jump or my reaction time. Every time I take a measurement, I'll get a different answer. Pretty much everything is a random process. This class looks at how to analyze systems that are random. Now MATLAB is a matrix language. If I type in rand, I get a single random number. If I do rand of 10 comma 1, I'll get 10 random numbers in a 10 by 1 matrix. That'll be a continuous probability. We'll cover that a little bit later. If I want a discrete probability, what we'll start with in the class, I can do something like take the random numbers times 6 and round them up. That'll give me 6-sided dice. Now, the problem you have is how do you mathematically describe the RAND function of MATLAB? And how do you mathematically describe any random process? That's kind of what we're looking at this class. One way to do that is do a Monte Carlo simulation. Here the idea is if I take the die and roll the dice a thousand times, I can look at the distribution and see how many times you get a 1, how many times you get a 2, how many times you get a 3. If I just simply list the random numbers versus the die roll, it doesn't really tell you a whole lot. Instead, if I were to sort the die rolls, that'll kind of give me a thing called the cumulative distribution function, or CDF. This is roughly the probability, and this is the number that I get. That'd be for the RAND function in MATLAB gives a uniform distribution, numbers between 0 and 1. If I have a discrete distribution, like a rolling a die, I'll get discrete numbers. A sixth of the time I get a 1, sixth of the time I get a 2, sixth of the time I get a 3, and so on. So this is what a discrete time di distribution looks like. To figure out what number I rolled, what I would do is generate a random number between 0 and 1, and then come over here, and it says that probability corresponds to a 4. I just rolled a 4. A property of a cumulative distribution function is that 
This tells you the probability that y is less than x. It must start at zero, meaning the probability that nothing happened is zero, and it must go to one, meaning the probability that something happened is one. That's one way to mathematically describe a probability function, a cumulative distribution function. Another thing we'll be looking at in this class is a probability density function, PDF. That's the derivative of the CDF. For example, if I take a RAND function in MATLAB, it generates a random number between 0 and 1. It has the, the PDF as follows. It could be any number between 0 and 1. 0 probability is bigger than 1. 0 probability is less than 1. In addition, the area must be 1. The area is the probability that something happened. If I have a discrete time PDF, the PDF function looks like this. These are delta functions. I can only have numbers that are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. Zero probability for any other number. And the area to the curve, again, has to add to 1. That's the first concept to get across in this class. The PDF describes the probability density. The CDF also describes it. Those are the main tools we'll be using to describe probability functions. Some of the functions we'll be looking at are Bernoulli trial, that's like flipping a coin, binomial distribution, flipping n coins, geometric distribution, that's flip a coin until you get a heads, uh, Pascal distribution, uh, flip a coin until you get n heads, hypergeometric, that's geometric without replacement, uh, Poisson, number of events in a time interval, and the most important one would be a normal distribution, that's the binomial distribution as time goes to infinity. Uh, other things we'll be looking at in this class would be like means, standard deviations, and moments. To describe a probability density function, I'd like to use a number. Numbers that are very useful would be the mean or the average, as well as the standard deviation, which is the spread. Moment generating functions are actually Laplace transforms or z-transforms. They're extremely useful. The moment generating function also tells you what the mean, the average is, as well as other information. Uh, third thing we'll be looking at this class is if you have a random process, how do you test? Such as, does y have a mean that's greater than x? Is x a uniform distribution? Those will be t-tests, chi-square tests, things we'll cover at the end of the semester. So that's what we'll be doing in ECE 341 this semester. It's kind of a fun class. I get a real kick out of statistics, and hopefully you'll kind of get a kick out of it too.